Today I'm going to walk you through how to install Kali on VirtualBox. Uh, Kali is a penetration testing operating system. So it has a bunch of built-in software that will help all kinds of different uh, type of uh, testing and whatnot. First off, we need to download it. So if you go to Kali.org, you can click on the downloads. This will bring up the page that has um, their different uh, versions between their 64-bit, 32, they also have uh, versions for ARM processors and all kinds of other devices. But for uh, our needs, I'm going to just download this 64-bit uh, turret. Um, I'm going to do the turret because it should be a little bit quicker, but you can download the uh, standard ISO if you want. Once your download is complete, you'll want to open VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, for the type, you want to select Linux, and for the version, select a 64-bit version if you download the 64-bit version of Kali. Now, select the amount of RAM you want to use this machine to use. You can easily change this later if need be. Don't go below about 512 megabytes, um, and you really shouldn't need anything above 2 gigabytes, at least for now. Keep in mind, um, that since this is a virtual machine, it's running simultaneously with your main operating system, so you don't want to use all the available RAM either. Next, we need to create a virtual hard drive to use. I prefer to use a virtual machine disk since it works well with other hypervisors like VMware, etc. But if you don't plan on migrating this machine to other programs, feel free to select uh, the virtual disk image, the VDI. Now we need to select if we want the drive to be dynamically allocated, meaning it'll only take up as much space as it needs, or if we want it to be created at a fixed size. Um, most people prefer to use dynamically allocated, but if you have plenty of hard drive space or are planning on encrypting the drive, feel free to use the fixed size option. Select how large you want the hard drive to be. This will be the maximum hard drive size that Kali will use. 20 gigabytes is about the minimum you should use. How much uh, hard drive space you'll need will depend on the kind of work you're doing. For example, uh, dumping databases could easily eat up tw 20 gigabytes pretty quickly. So, um, for me, I'm going to use 25 gigabytes. Alright, the new machine is uh, created. Now you can click Start and install Kali, or select Settings and customize a few more things. Under General, and then Advanced, you can select to share the clipboard between Kali and your main operating system. You will need to install VirtualBox Guest Editions on Kali, as I will show you how to do in a future video for this feature to work. Be careful if you decide to select more than one CPU core to use as this has caused Kali to randomly crash in the past. I'm not sure if it's fixed or not, I just stick with one core now. It works relatively fine. There isn't really a need to change anything in the display menu. The 2D and 3D accelerations, uh, they only work with Windows. Um, as for the video memory, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Under Network, I'd recommend changing the adapter type from NAT to Bridged. This will allow Kali to obtain an IP address from your router and make life uh, a bit easier in the future. You can also change the MAC address here too. Now we are ready to install Kali on our new VM. Go ahead and click Start. Since this is the first time we started this machine, it'll prompt us to select an image we want to install or boot from. Go ahead and select the Kali ISO we downloaded earlier. You may need to extract it first if it is zipped. The installation process is fairly simple and self-explanatory, so I'll zip through it. The only thing different here that I'm doing that you might not be doing is I'm selecting to use the encrypted drive just because it has a few more steps in the setup process and the logging in process so that I can document it. Otherwise, just selecting the um, first option would work fine.
Now that everything is installed, the system will automatically boot. Since I selected to use an encrypted drive, I need to enter the encryption password before Kali will actually boot up. This is the login screen. Your username is root, R-O-O-T, and the password is the password that you entered when you first installed Kali. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you don't like it, give it a thumbs up anyway. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to address them. If you want to see more videos like this about Kali, penetration testing, hacking, and mitigation, please subscribe. In the next videos, I will show you how to update the software, install the new Tor browser, and how to use tools like Metasploit, uh, SQL Map, Slow Loris, and more importantly, how to use them anonymously and securely. Thanks for watching! Normally, it's really simple to install the Tor browser. All you pretty much have to do is just download it and then open it. But there are a couple caveats with installing it in Kali, and I'll go over those. Today, I'm going to show you how to brute force a uh, website login using Hydra. There's the IP address for the host, the login name is root, and the password is 557. So if I go back to the form, root, and then 557, sign in, and that's it. Very simple. One thing that might be helpful if you are trying to mitigate against this type of an attack would be... I'm going to show you how to perform a low bandwidth denial of service attack that is quite effective against um, a, a large amount of uh, websites mostly Apache host machine, the victim machine, if I actually refresh Apache, <laughs> it's not even coming up, I didn't do it quick enough.